Hi, this is the Bet Central podcast. Let's make some profit. Hello and welcome to the Bet Central podcast powered by Bedcoza. Yes, it's that Champions League edition. Myself, Mitch McKenna, and of course, our incredible analyst Grant and Dave. We're going to go through some of the big fixtures in the Champions League this week. A very good morning to you, gentlemen. Um, it seems like all our teams were not on the losey end this past weekend. So we'll take that going into the European nights. Now, let's kick off with the first big one happening this Tuesday. Arsenal taking on PSG, of course. Massive win for Arsenal over the weekend. Um, and PSG without Kylian Mbappe have adapted okay. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a tough task to break down that uh, Arsenal defence grant. Yeah, this Arsenal defence looks probably like the best defence in Europe. And PSG generally haven't been the best travellers. They have won a few recent away fixtures. But if you look at the last 15 away games in the Champions League, it's only four wins. And of course, the big story is that it's the post-Mbappe era for PSG. Can they finally win the Champions League without him, which would be quite ironic. I mean, I think they'll have quite a decent chance because they'll be more of a they'll be more of a team without necessarily carrying a player that's not defending. So, for Luis Enrique's tactics, it, it might not be a bad thing. But his basically has replaced him by using Asensio as a false nine, who's now injured. So this weekend, I mean, yeah, they they're there to play. Um, Kang In Lee as the false nine. Um, Gonzalo Ramos is injured, and basically doesn't seem to particularly rate um Rando Colomani as well. So, um, yeah, that centre forward position is a bit of a worry. And they took a long time to beat uh, Girona in the last in the in, on match day one. They missed so many chances, some comical misses from Dembele, but they eventually got the win. So yeah, going to Arsenal is going to be very tough for them. I mean, this Arsenal team is like, I mean, even though Arteta's a Guardiola kind of disciple, his his teams have later been a bit more like uh, vintage Mourinho teams, you know, absorbing pressure and being hard to beat and using the dark arts and everything. And I think that probably suits them quite well in the Champions League. And they have a good record at home. I mean. They've lost one of the last 15 home games. They've got 29 goals in their last 11 at home. So, yeah, they probably, they, they're quite big favourites in terms of the odds. So, I think they'll probably get the win, but I expect they're going to play relatively defensively as they've done in against Spurs and City in recent weeks and let PSG have some of the ball and then, um yeah, and then get the goal and then probably when they do score, just kind of retreat and then play on the break. That's what I expect from the game. And because of that, you could say probably Arsenal might win to zero especially with PSG in not having a number nine, I think that's more likely. But yeah, I think that's based on what we've seen of late, that's probably the most likely outcome, the safest way to go. Dave, how about you bidding wise? Um, how do you see this Arsenal and PSG game going? Yeah, similar to Grant, I think it's not the easiest game to bet on because I also expect, you know, both teams to be quite uh, defensive. I mean, Arsenal, Unbeaten in 10, PSG are unbeaten in 12. Uh, both will want, you know, to keep that record going. I, I think both would be also happy with a draw uh, in this one. Um, because I wasn't 100% sure, you know, um, PSG have a good streak of over 2.5 goals, 5 out of the last 7. Uh, but um, like Grant said, you know, Arsenal defense, especially when it comes to these big games, as we've seen against Manchester City, you know, they, they're focusing on the defense quite a bit. They drew 0-0 uh, against Atalanta in the, in the first round. Um, so I actually left this game out of, out of the multi. I didn't include it. Um, like Grant said, you know, they, they could be maybe an Arsenal win uh, to zero or maybe, you know, an under, um, under 3.5 or if you're a bit more risky under 2.5 yeah. um, something that I would look at for this game um, but yeah for the multi this week I just left it out now let's move on over to Dave's team by Leverkusen taking on AC Milan of course last time out Milan managed to chip three goals into their net um, Liverpool dominating that game at the San Siro uh, Leverkusen, on the other hand, massive point on the weekend against Vincent Company's Bayern, which is incredible for them. I mean, you know, with we've seen it since last season and coming into the season as well. Leverkusen have this never say die attitude, and towards the 90 minutes, you need to start getting nervous, Grant, because you just don't know if you might chip in a goal or even two. 
Um, I, for me personally, it's difficult to see uh, Leverkusen losing to Milan. I think it's going to be a good game, but I think that Leverkusen attack is so, so good. Yeah, and I mean, what? I think it's two losses in 61 or something along those lines for, for Leverkusen. It's kind of crazy the run they're on. They blew final to win the in on match day one. And as you say, AC Milan were smashed by Liverpool at the San Siro. I mean, they are complete domination there. Liverpool had 23 shots over three expected goals. Uh, but uh, Milan, I mean, ended last season terribly. Had to fire um, their coach Stefano Pioli. Paulo Fonseca had a difficult start. They lost at Parma. They yeah, they just they weren't playing well. Even against Lazio, they gave up tons of chances. But in the last few games, they've come back to life. I mean, they won their last three Serie A matches, and the last two games, he's changed formation. He's kind of gone to like a four-two-four formation with Abraham and Morata together as a front pairing, and then Liao and Pulisic wide, but like very high up. So, yeah, and that's turned their season. I mean, they beat Inter Milan, which they I think they'd lost six in a row to them before that. This weekend, they had a nice 3 0 win. And, yeah, that front two's, I think it's really works well together because, you know, before they had Giroud, who was a good player, but kind of a static nine. And now they've got two very mobile front men who can do all sorts of things yeah. around the channels. And Morata's also great in the air. So it works nicely. And I hope that he plays the same shape in Germany. Of course, it'll be quite brave. I mean, he might, just, you know, decide to go back to. Uh, an extra midfielder and just play one striker. But I hope he goes and, and takes uh, Leverkusen on because, I mean, Milan need a win. They they, they lose a second match. They're in, bit of, they're in a bit of trouble. And they, they have a poor away record in the Champions League, so they may as well just go for it. Um, and Leverkusen, I mean, probably not quite at their best this season. I was surprised by how little of a game they had against Bayern. I mean, after they won that 3-0 last year where they just dominated completely. on Over the weekend, they only had three shots and about 30% possession. I mean, at least it shows they can play different ways and still get results. Um, the one thing I should hopefully Dave will clarify is, I mean, I saw Grimaldo had some sort of injury late in the game, but otherwise it's a full-strength team. And I'm also keen to hear whether he thinks Chebe Londo is going to play, you know, Barney Face or Schick, or he's going to play a false nine, because he played a false nine in some Champions I mean, some of the European games last year, the big games um, in the Europa League. So, yeah, that all kind of affects how you'd see the game going. Uh, I think Leverkusen will win, and I think there'll be goals in the match. You know, I think yeah. it's two plus two plus goals for Leverkusen in the last fifteen home matches. So yeah, they probably score twice. It's just whether Milan's front four can also hurt them, especially because Leverkusen play a back three, and that's what Inter Milan played and what Milan caused so many problems against with that front four. Because suddenly you haven't got the spare men that you expected uh, defensively. So I think it'll be over three point five goals probably, and then yeah, score markets obviously flown verts on fire maybe Morata so there's a few options but I think Leverkusen will have enough just to get over the line Dave I mean another big European night uh, what's your thoughts yeah I'm excited um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very nice fixture uh, like Grant said this one is a fixture that charts for goals I mean um, Leverkusen uh, over 2.5 goals in four out of their last five games. Milan in nine out of their last nine games, over 2.5 goals. Uh, Leverkusen in the Bundesliga, you know, they started uh, a bit unexpected, at least um, from a defensive point of view. In five games, they conceded 10 goals already, uh, but they also scored 14. So, you know, they're showing that um, prolific side up front, but um, they are a bit more fragile at the back. Um, I, I don't have an update on Grimaldo, unfortunately, so we'll have to see if if he if he's gonna be fit. I think uh, Xavi has rotated a bit more uh, this season. Uh, I think also because he's expecting a long season, you know, going deep into into the tournaments, so he's rotating. I think from the beginning. Uh, but for this one, I expect Leverkusen like a, a near full strength eleven. It's gonna be interesting to see whether he starts with Boniface, who's who's played quite well. Uh, or whether he uses a false nine, uh, Florian Wirtz. I mean, I, that's what he did. No, he he played with Boniface in the in the in the first game uh, when they beat um, his way four uh, 0 That was quite quite impressive, and 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 that looked like Leverkusen from last season. Um, for the multi, um, because the odds for some of these games are quite low, uh, yeah. I did select. Um, the first half goal, and actually all my all my selections for this week, I picked out ten games that will have a first half goal. Um, okay. Because when we look at the first round of Champions League, and we saw that there were many games that had lots lots of goals. You know, it was like a real goal bonanza. Um, so I'm expecting something similar, uh, and I think 
with the stats that both teams are coming into this this fixture, I think there will be at least one goal in the first half. Now let's move on over to our next fixture, uh, Villa taking on Bayern, of course at Villa Park. Now, Aston Villa with a 2-2 draw against Ipswich over the weekend. They came back 1-0 down in the first half, scoring those two. I think Villa have been, you know, we thought that they were going to take a massive knock with playing European action, but they've looked okay so far. But they're going up against a team that has scored 21 goals in the past four games, which is absolutely ridiculous. I think that by an attack looks scary. And yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how Villa manages to stop them, even if if, if they do. Because, I mean, we've seen the season, Grant, that Villa can let in some goals. I mean, you look at what Arsenal did. I mean, even Ipswich now scoring two against them as well. That defense is not as solid as you would hope it would be um, going into this game against Bayern. Yeah, it's not. And it's the worst time to play a Bayern team that's so free-flowing. I mean, credit to Vincent Company. He's got his ideas across quite quickly. I uh, hope for his sake that it doesn't fizzle out too soon. Uh, they played really well against Leverkusen, or at least dominated the game, which is a huge change from last year when they were kind of kind of humiliated uh, in that 3-0 uh, d- a destruction under Thomas Tuchel. So, yeah, and I mean, look, um, Bayern, seven, what, seven matches this season, 30 goals scored. And as you say, Villa's defence is not the most solid. Um, they've been trying to get the right balance. I mean, the right back position has been a big issue. It was Ezri Konza this weekend, but they've played all different options there with Matty Cash out. So that's a problem because Gnabry's firing down the left and Michael Elise is firing down the right. So I think for Villa, they I think they'll understand they probably they might lose this match at home, but they've got you know Bologna at home, Club Bruges away coming up after this to try and qualify for the knockout stages and then Celtic in their, at home in their final game. So even if they lose this with the three points on the board already, they, they're not in the worst shape. So, I mean, it's kind of a free hit. Having said that, I mean, Emery did manage to knock Bayern out with Villarreal a couple of years ago, two years ago, by being pretty yeah. defensive and solid and then playing on the break with Dan Juma. He's got, you know, Watkins now and Duran off the bench could cause some problems for this, for this Bayern defence. Especially because Bayern's also, I mean, they still haven't solved their right-back issue they're playing, you know, Guerrero's played right back and Conrad Lima and it was Joshua Kimmich at the start of the season. They just can't quite figure out who to play there. So, yeah, they, they probably will concede. and But they, I think Bayern will win with both teams to score in the fixture. They've just got too much firepower and Kane returning, Michael Leach returning to England. Um, they'll be keen to impress. So, yeah, I think Bayern will win. And 1.71 is not terrible considering some of the, the odds we've seen in some games this this week. Um, so, I mean, that's that's worth it as a straight win. Or Bayern victory, and then you go with either both teams to score or Bayern win and over 2.5, I think, uh, just to be safer if they, they maybe win 3-0 or something. But there's a few options, but I think most of them lead to uh, victory for the German, the German Giants. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with Grant there, Dave. I mean, I think I'm also leaning over to a Bayern win with over 2.5, and that's sitting at 2.30 odds, which is not too bad. Not bad at all, I think. Uh, especially, um, like Grant said, you know we've seen Villa. They tend to concede first in their games, and then they do have enough strength to to come back. But you know they haven't played a team like Bayern this season uh, in the Premier League yet. Um, but there is goals on both of these sides, like like Grant said, uh, over over two point five and six out of uh, the last six games for Villa. Bayern in eight out of their last ten games over two point five. Um, Bayern have been first half winner in nine out of the last ten games. Um, so for this one, I again um, selected a goal in the first half. Uh, um, it's just uh, not point two five odds, but uh, I think if you look at the ten games that I've selected, you're getting to nine odds overall. Uh, this is a fixture where I, I you could even look at um, you know over one point five goals in the first half. I think. Uh, you know, like we've all said, um, the stats are there. Uh, both teams uh, yeah. uh, are very prolific this season already. Um, Villa have scored twelve and conceded nine uh, in their six games in the in the Premier League so far. And I mean, we've mentioned Bayern; they look uh, quite free flowing under Vincent Company. Seventeen goals scored in five games and just conceded four. So, yeah, it speaks for for another game, exciting games with goals. 
uh, one could even look at over 3.5 after full time um, but yeah for the multi i just uh, need one first of all let's hope it comes now let's move on over to Lille, who will be hosting real madrid this week um in the champions league uh, Lille only have one win in five, so it's going to be quite a difficult task to host the champions. Looking at my team, obviously we played the Madrid derby this uh, past weekend. Yeah, that last few minutes, not the greatest conceding so late, but Atletico have obviously been doing that the whole season, scoring um, in the dying minutes of the game. Uh, a couple of positives is, of course, Kamavinga, he'll be back for for this game obviously he got injured just before the uefa super cup so i'm expecting him to start ahead of modric and it's going to be a similar formation that we saw them win the champions league in where jude is sitting in the 10 and the two attacking players of rodrigo and vinnie because mbappe is um out injured so it'll be reverting to the old uh, formation that was played last season which was very fruitful so yeah look i'm, I'm expecting some goals uh 100 um, especially from our two front men. Rodrigo looks very on it, so I'll definitely give a pun for Rodrigo anytime goal scorer. He looks very good. I know Vinny always grabs the headlines, but yeah, he's been working quite hard um, in putting his name out there. So that would be my punt for this Lille and Real Madrid game. Your thoughts, mm -hmm. Grant? Yeah, you summed it up well. I mean, obviously your, your team's missing Mbappe and Brian Diaz and one or two other players, but I mean, it's been quite hard to integrate him by pair so far, trying to get it, you know, get him into that front four. And then I think Tony Cruz has been a loss because you haven't got that passer, that same type yeah. of passer from deeper areas. So I think maybe when it gets down to the, the the business end of the Champions League, he might have to play this formation from last year, but maybe play Vinicius and Mbappe as the two and use Rodrigo off the bench. Just to have better balance and then yeah, Mod either Kamavinga or Modric have to play deeper because with that front four, it's going to be so open. Um, you've kind of got four players that don't, well, at least three of those guys don't really defend, which is obviously about the, you know, the issue PSG had with Mbappe last year. So maybe it's not too bad to try this formation now and then Mbappe can reintegrate back in. I know Rodrigo dropping to the bench would be harsh, but I think it's probably what's going to happen. And I mean, Lille's a nice game for Madrid. It's difficult to judge Lille's first game because they played most of it with, with 10 men after Angel Gomez was sent off. And I mean, there was complete domination, yeah, against um, against Sporting there. Yeah, uh, Sporting had eighteen shots. Leo had three. Uh, it was one way, one way traffic. I mean, Leo obviously do have goal threats. Jonathan David's got a hat trick this weekend, and he scored the previous game. He got five. He's got five this season. And on the right, they've got um, De Grova as well, who's got three goals this season. So they have they have some nice players, but I think at the back they are they're fragile. Samuel and Titi's basically been injured for. Well, he, as he usually is, he's been injured for months. So the defense is a bit weak, and they've got some experienced guys there, Baca and Munia and so forth. But I think they, Real Madrid are going to score a fair few goals in this game. And I mean, even 1.54 on a straight Real Madrid win is quite nice. I mean, we we're talking about Real, uh, Man City having like what 1.02 odds or something ridiculous. Yeah. Real, Real Madrid's a straight win in France is uh, is really nice odds. And I mean, they're not, almost never losing the Champions League. So that's probably just safe and worth taking and then you can look at different score markets sure i mean bellingham might be one to look at because he he must be quite frustrated he doesn't usually score against atletico so he's yeah. yeah he's probably got some uh some goals in him so there's a few things but i think the straight win is worth just going for without without even complicating it your thoughts grant i mean dave yeah, I mean, I don't think anybody can look past Real Madrid here. You know, it's it's these kind of games that where you expect them to win and they turn up and they, they just win. You know, they're not like many other sides that, that disappoint when, you know, when they're expected to win and then they, they don't come through. Uh, it's hardly ever that you see Real Madrid, you know, um, drop points in, in these kind of games. You know, maybe they, they're not at their best, uh, but they always, you know, find a way. Um I think again, this this game um, shouts for goals for me. Uh, Lille, I think it's four out of their last uh, six games that had over two point five, and Real it was three out of their last four games that had over two point five. Uh, Lille have scored eleven and conceded um, seven so far, and uh, Real, you know, Grant mentioned how. Uh, prolific they sort of started in the in la liga um struggled yeah. a little bit in the beginning with the shape but they did score 17 goals in eight games and conceded six um 
This one, I, I again uh, looked at the first half goals because um, I think uh, there will be goals in this game. Uh, so I just selected uh, over uh, 0.5 goals again for this one. Um, Real has scored first in five out of the last six games, so maybe that's also something people could look at. Um, but I think uh, if I was going to look at you know, a, a single game, uh, I would also look at uh, Real to win and over 2.5 goals and 2.25 odds. Quite nice. Um, but yeah, let's see what, what comes through. Now, Leipzig, they host Juventus. I think both teams have similar starts, both of them unbeaten, but quite a few draws in there. Um, look, looking, just judging based off, I haven't, to be honest with you, I haven't watched a single minute of Juventus or Leipzig, but judging by the recent results, also the conversations that were around that Juventus, uh, Napoli game where there was hardly any shots, which is quite crazy. Um, I am leaning towards a draw in this one and I don't think it's going to be a high scoring game. That's how I'm feeling. I think out of all the fixtures in this new formation format, of the Champions League. I think this one might be the one where we see the less goals. So I'm going to go with draw. It's going to be a little bit different this week with this with this pick. But yeah, Grant, I want to know your thoughts. Yeah, Juventus are hard to put your finger on because they've had a bunch of non-all draws in Serie A and not always creating a whole lot. But they got a, they got a good win in the first fixture in the Champions League. Um, I mean, a, a nice game against PSV. And they were pretty dominant in the match. You know, put up almost 3 XG. And Vlaovic got a brace this weekend. I mean, it's been quite hard for Thiago Mata to integrate him because he doesn't usually play with a genuine striker. You know, it was Xerxi at his previous club who's kind of more of a false nine. So I'm not sure if he loves Vlaovic, but he's got him scoring. And it's weird because they spent so much money on these midfielders. You know, they signed Douglas Luiz and they signed Kefram Turam, but neither of those two are even starting for them at the moment. So kind of a weird start to the season for them. And then you've got Leipzig who they... They're doing well in the Bundesliga, but I mean, they burgled a win against Leverkusen uh, in round was it round two. They with two no down and were completely uh, yeah outplayed, but someone managed to win the game. And they've still got all the firepower we expected from previous seasons. You know, Benjamin Benjamin Sesko, Pender, uh, Chevy Simmons, etc. So I think they are probably have more attacking threat than Juve as a team of all. Uh, but it's not an easy yeah. one to actually predict. Uh, I think. The odds are nice, so you could probably go for Leipzig straight win at home. They should be strong in Germany, even though they, yeah, they they played well against Real Madrid last year. So maybe you know focused on the Champions League a bit more, they might beat Juve. Um, I think you're probably right though, that it's going to be a little bit lower scoring. Juve have been giving up almost no chances to opponents in the league games. Um, so yeah, maybe a narrow victory for Leipzig could be on the cards. I mean, the odds are a bit weird. I think just packing them as a straight win is probably the easiest than trying to complicate with maybe a one-goal margin win or overs or unders. I think it's too too difficult. So, yeah, straight straight win for the Red Bulls. Uh, what's your thoughts, Dave? I mean, two, three wins, two draws in the league for Leipzig. I mean, you've followed them more. Do you think they can get one over Juventus? Mm, I'm not 100% sure, to be, to be quite honest. Uh, yes, they, they beat Leverkusen. Um, but I think they were a bit lucky in that game. Um, XG Leverkusen dominated. Uh, like I said, it was one of those games where they just showed that frailty at the back. Uh, Leipzig obviously can be quite uh, clinical on the counter. Um, transition football, you know, that's what that what they did against Leverkusen, and, and they scored. But then, um, like Grant already said, you know, they already dropped those points that they made against Leverkusen in, in the next two games against uh, teams where they were expected to win. You know, they came up with two nil-nil draws, uh, which was quite surprising. On the weekend, they win. They won 4-0, um, you know, showing the other side. But uh, I don't know if, you know, I mean, you were, are no pushovers. Um, they also had three nil-nils already in Serie A. They haven't actually conceded yeah. in six games, which is quite impressive. Uh so, so I'm not sure. I, I, I think it's going to be a tight game. It could maybe be even end up in a null or one all. I'm not so sure uh, that I would make Leipzig favourites here. I think uh, Juventus have more European experience. Mm, and, uh, you know, they, they, will, they will probably go to Germany to, you know, to be very solid at the back. And gonna, those games, Leipzig struggle a bit more, you know, when they have to 
uh, have most of the ball and, and dominate the play. They they are a team that likes more, you know, the transition, the counter-attacking football when they play against stronger teams. But it's going to be interesting. I left it out of the multi. I wasn't sure. Uh, it's, yeah. it's not a game that shouts gold, so I also didn't want to include it. Now, let's speak about that multi. Let's go through it, um, Dave. We, the code is obviously 9JXBF, but I just want you to go through uh, the multi just one more time. Yeah, so it's 11 games. Um, I, actually, I actually added one more while we were talking. Um, that all focus on first half goals because I think um, yeah, there is some decent value and, and a lot of the, the teams have come through. Um, so it's Aston Villa against Bayern Munich. The goal in the first half. Barcelona against Young Boys. Barcelona to score in the first half. Inter against uh, Red Star. A goal in the first half. Leverkusen, Milan. A goal in the first half. Dortmund against Celtic. A goal in the first half. Um, Slovan Bratislava against Man City. Man City to score in the first half. PSV Sporting. Liverpool, Bologna. Zagreb, Monaco. Shakhtar, Atalanta. And Lille against Real Madrid. All of those a goal in the first half. 11 games for 11.67 odds. Um, quite nice. I hope it will come through. There we go. That's the multi. That's the Champions League this week. Game week two under the new format. Let us know how you'll be going about things during these European nights by simply tagging us at Bedcoza. I've been Mitch Matjana. That's been Grant. That's been Dave. We'll see you again. Peace. Peace.